Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Sometimes when we are trying to solve a math question, the hardest part is to actually understand what the question is asking. And the work might be actually pretty easy, just like this question. And let me tell you guys that I got this question from the Math League contest. So I got it from this book, and it's a math competition for high school students. And you can see that it's actually in the year of 2000, and this is actually the last question. So it's meant to be a little bit more difficult than the other questions on that particular test. For what number k can the graph of y is equal to x minus 3 over 1 minus 3x be transformed into the graph of x times y equals k by a translation? You know the deal. Please pause the video and try this first. Done? Okay, let me tell you guys that the answer for this question is k is equal to 8 over 9. So, wow. How did we even get that? Don't worry, let me break it down for you guys. So here we are talking about the graph for this and that. Let's take a look at the graph of this first, especially we are trying to find out number k and put it here, right? So if we have the equation x times y is equal to k, and let's say k is just a positive number, so let me just indicate that as greater than zero, then this is actually just going to be a typical hyperbola graph, like this, like that. And you can just imagine k is equal to 1. So that's the idea, and you get this. But if k is less than 0, then we will just have an upside down graph. So that's why I wanted to say, if k is greater than 0, then this is the graph that we have. And from here, is it possible for us to just take this graph and then do translations, and we'll end up with that? So that's pretty much what the question is saying. So hopefully, that's more understandable, all right? Yeah. OK, so how exactly can we approach this? It's actually not bad at all. We have a rational function. Let's put this into a nicer form, and let me show you. We have y is equal to x minus 3 over, let me just put that first. So we have negative 3x plus 1. And let's go ahead and do polynomial long division. So we have x minus 3, and then divided by negative 3x plus 1. And then I'm just going to put down negative 1 third, because negative 1 third times that will give us x. And this times that is negative 1 third. And then subtract. This minus sign is 0. And then here we have negative 3 plus 1 third. And then get your common denominator and all that. We will get negative 8 over 3. OK? So once we have this, we can come back here and say y is just equal to, well, this number, negative 1 over 3. In fact, it's just the new horizontal acetal. And then we will have to put this down, and we'll just put this down as plus negative 8 over 3 over negative 3x plus 1. And in fact, this will tell you the vertical shiftment of the graph. OK, so far so good. But what else, though? We know the vertical shiftment is about this. How about how do we find out the horizontal shiftment? That's the case when we had to look at x is being added with a number was subtracted from you know all that stuff. So pay attention to here. Here we have negative three times x. Let's go ahead and factor out the negative three. So I'm just going to put it down right here. And then we will just have x. And then this is one divided by negative three, we will have negative one over three. Cool. And now I'm just going to move this to the other side so we get y plus 1 over 3. That's equal to negative divided by negative is positive. And then we have 8 on the top over 3 and then over another 3. So that will be over 9. Aha! See it? But I'll explain more a little bit, so don't worry. And then we have this, which is x minus 1 over 3. And finally, let me just multiply this on both sides. So ladies and gentlemen, we get parentheses x minus 1 over 3 times y plus 1 over 3. That's equal to 8 over 9. Hmm? Just like this. Just like this. Now that's all you have to do. And you will be able to answer the last question on our math common test. But again, it's like... The question wording is like, wow. It's like, I don't, 
Yeah, it took me a while to really understand how <laughs> how to understand this question, how to explain this question. And let me just explain this real quick. When we have the equation in this particular form, greater than this, it tells us where we have to move. Here, when we have x minus 1 over 3, it tells us that we have to move to the right 1 over 3 unit. And then when we have y plus 1 over 3, it tells us to go down 1 over 3 units. So let me just give you guys a sketch of this graph. We are going to get something like this. Positive 1 over 3, that will be the new x value here. And technically, that's the vertical acetope. And you can see that x cannot be equal to 1 over 3 because otherwise we'll get 0 right here. All right, So that's another way to look at it. That's why it is moved to the right 1 over 3 units. So that's the vertical acetope here. And then, likewise, as we mentioned it, this is the horizontal acetope, which is, you know, the shiftment is just you bring the graph down 1 over 3 units. So let me just put it down right here. This is negative 1 over 3. And then the horizontal acetope. And the graph will look like this. And like that. Oops. Okay, so just like this. And uh, hopefully everything's clear. There are other ways to do it. And I think this is the easiest way. If you have other ways, feel free to leave your approach in the comment down below. Hopefully you enjoyed the video so far. I would like to tell you about our sponsor today, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries. And we all come together to find inspirations and take the next step in our creative journeys. I have been a member of Skillshare for a while now and I really like their YouTube related classes. One class that I finished a while ago that has really benefited me a lot is called the Create Irresistible YouTube Thumbnails with Canva by Ronnie Hermosa. One thing I learned and have been implementing in my videos is to give my emotions in my thumbnails and I found the result to be phenomenal. Overall, his class is very organized and I really like his ideas and techniques. On Skillshare, you can learn anything that interests you and they have new premium classes launching each week. And that's why I'm recommending it to you and the first 1000 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare.